Today we are going to start our sourdough bread making process. All you need is a scale. I suggest that you purchase one. You will need about 60 grams of leaven. To make your leaven, you will need about 10 grams of starter that you have fed already overnight. You will need about 30 grams of water and 30 grams of bread flour. And you will let this sit for at least eight hours. And after eight hours, you should observe how your leaven looks like. It should have a certain acidic smell like vinegary. It should have these bubbles, as you can see. So the other way is to use the floating method. So you take a little bit of sourdough, maybe that much, right there, and you just drop it into the water. And if it stays afloat, then the sourdough is ready, which ours has, definitely. To the 60 grams of leaven, add 300 grams of water, and using your hands, mix the solution together. After you have thoroughly mixed the leaven and the water, you will now add flour. We are going to use two types of flour. You're going to measure out for one loaf of sourdough bread, 310 grams of bread flour. And for this recipe, I used rye flour and I added 80 grams of rye flour. You can use spelt flour, you can also use whole wheat flour. It's really up to you. I have used all three and they have come up uh, almost the same way. So uh, feel free to try and for us, we really like the rye flour best. So after you've measured the flours into the bowl, use your hands to mix and squeeze the dough in a circular motion until you do not see any dry lumps anymore. You are then going to cover and have the dough rest for about 20 minutes. This allows the flour to fully hydrate. So once you have let the dough rest for 20 minutes, you are going to sprinkle the salt evenly over the surface of the dough. And you're going to mix this very well to combine. At this time, try to observe your flour. Uh, you might need to make adjustments with addition of water. If the dough feels really resistant to mixing, which really with this recipe, I haven't had to add any additional water, but if it's difficult to work with, kind of dry um, inside the bowl, add more water using about 20 to 25 grams every time. Um, so like I said, I haven't really used much of additional water. Make, make sure that if you do add water, you're going to thoroughly mix it in with the salt until the dough is no longer slick on the surface. The dough should feel supple and somewhat sticky at this point. The next step is bulk fermentation. With the dough in the bowl, you're going to cover it and set the bowl aside in a warm location, preferably about 75 degrees Fahrenheit. And you will let this bulk ferment for about three and a half to four hours, perhaps half an hour shorter in the summer or maybe even half an hour longer in the winter. During this time, you're going to stretch and fold the dough in the bowl 
This helps develop the gluten network that is essential to trap fermentation gases. So you do this by wetting your hands first to prevent the dough from sticking and gently sliding your fingers under the dough. You're going to release the dough from the sides of the bowl and gently fold it to the center. You're going to repeat this process every 30 to 45 minutes. Just be careful towards the end of bulk fermentation, uh, not to aggressively handle or even deflate the dough. Now at this time, you should notice it progressed from a shaggy mass when you started, when you started to mix it and started bulk fermentation, to a more cohesive uh, character in the dough. It's like smoother on the outside. After three and a half to four hours or even longer depending on room temperature and the dough has increased by at least a third of its size, you are going to also see fermentation bubbles breaking the surface. Now it is time to shape the dough. Now this is done in two stages. So the first one is to pre-shape it with a short bench resting period and then you're going to follow that with a tighter final shaping. So to do the initial pre-shape, you're going to use your bowl scraper and swiftly remove the dough from the bowl and place it on a lightly floured surface. Using your hands, you're going to bring the top of the dough to the center, followed by the bottom and then the two sides in a north, east and west motion. You're going to tuck the resulting four corners to the middle as well. This will result in a slightly rounded form. Using your bench scraper, release the dough from the surface and flip it over seam side down. You're going to cover this with plastic and allow it to bench rest for about 10 to 30 minutes until it visibly relaxes. To final shape the dough, you're going to again use your bench scraper, flip the dough over onto a lightly floured surface, seam side up. Starting from the top, you're going to tuck the right side to the center, holding it in place, while you bring the left side to the center, overlapping with the first. Repeat this side to side stitching until you reach the bottom of the dough. You're going to roll the bottom towards the center, repeating as necessary until the seam is facing down. You're going to tuck as you go to create tension. Flour the top of the loaf generously, and then you're going to use your bench scraper to pick up the dough and flip it over, seam side up. Cradle it into your proofing basket before covering with a cloth. Cover with plastic and place in the refrigerator to retard for at least 8 hours or up to 24 hours before baking. After 24 hours or after at least 8 hours, you are going to remove the loaf from the refrigerator and you're going to let it sit at room temperature for about an hour. When it's ready to bake, it should feel like an inflated water balloon when you gently poke it with your index finger. The impression should linger in the dough rather than immediately bounce back. Now, depending on the temperature of your refrigerator as well as your kitchen, this may take more or less time to final proof before you actually bake. Now we're ready to bake. We're going to preheat a Dutch oven to 480 degrees Fahrenheit on the middle rack for about 20 minutes. Now cut a piece of parchment paper to fit the Dutch oven and carefully flip your loaf onto the parchment paper seam side down. You may choose to sprinkle a little flour onto the surface before scoring to get a more graphic contrast. Score the top of the loaf with a razor blade about one fourth inch deep. Doing so allows the loaf to fully expand in a controlled manner while baking. You can also add additional decorative scoring flourishes but be aware that the loaf will continue to spread before going into the oven as you do so. Now 
carefully lower it into the preheated Dutch oven. Position the lid and return it to the oven. Bake with the lid on for 20 minutes and remove the lid and lower the oven temperature to 10 to 15 degrees and bake for another 15 to 20 minutes until the crust is a deep rusty brown or darker if desired. Cool completely on a wire rack before you slice and enjoy!